I get shipped over to C95. C95 is an odd building. It's probably the second oldest. Looks like a dungeon. Every building kind of have its weapon of choice for the building. For example, C73, it's more like razors there. Uh, OBCC, the weapon of choice is the undetectable razor and the handcuff key. And the C95 is the bone crusher. The bone crusher is made out of plastics, usually plexiglass shaped in the form of knives, sharpened. You get them from anything that's plastic that can be sawed or cut off. There used to be plastic chairs and people used to saw off the leg of the chairs by using straps, uh, strips of sheets. They would wet the sheets, create a strip and saw it in um, saw motion. And you could design or cut out your own blade made of plastic. T-73 had a lot of that missing. You would see like gates on windows and you would see like half plastics missing. And then you gotta wonder like, how did they get it off? Like, doesn't matter what you do. That when there's a way, there's a will. People will get that out. One of the things that stuck out immediately was that they were not only bros there, but the, the buildings were filled with nietas. Mietas overpopulated that building. This is mid 90s. And because of that, it created more problems. Um, if you ever looked at that organization, they pretty much govern themselves. Uh, the, the administration hates them because if you leave them, they would ignore administration rules and regulations. They, they govern themselves. I mean, you will have a guy doing tattoos to fund a kitty box. You would have a preach, a preacher or somebody that's that's with them reading literature and lectures and giving Sunday sermons and even marrying their own. Yeah, you gotta see those marriages. Yeah, they throw rice and everything. And uh, there's tattoo makers, uh, there's, there's people that are uh, they have all types. You see them governing. They, they're always huddled up and they're always checking each other. They're always giving out sanctions in the bathroom, giving out chancletazos, which they call. And that's when somebody does something wrong and, and they get disciplined by getting spankings with a slipper. Yeah. Depending on how severe the offense was within their little government determines how many swipes of chan chancletazos they'll get. This is real, you can't make this up. And uh, so they populated the building. The number one way to get into the building is to have a really bad dope habit. Some people really do have bad dope habits and some people just act like they have dope habits so that they land in that building because of its riches. What I mean by riches is that a lot of heroin addicts, when they're gonna go in, you see, first of all, before 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 I explain that, let's, let's go into detail about this. You would have a, a, a meth head and you would have a crack head and you would have a dope fiend, right? The meth head would get arrested naked, wilding out, losing his mind, don't even know why he's getting arrested. You get arrested naked. The crackhead get arrested with gear that he done wore for about a month, back pockets touching, holes everywhere, smells like grease, oil, you want, whatever the hell he was laying on. Dead cat. But the dope fiend, they're kind of different. People that use heroin, they're kind of different. They estimate their value in advance. And if you notice, they're really good dressers. Heroin addicts really take care of themselves. They could be 50 years old, 80 years old, no teeth, 
but they will be the flyest cats on the block. So while they getting arrested and they're going through the screening process in the courts, the New York City courts, because when you're going through bookings, they always ask you questions. Do you do alcohol? Do you do drugs? Were you in the military? These questions, these all questions, they all mean something. They actually, if you were in the military, you say, yeah, then they'll, then they'll go into detail. Where were you at? What division? They want to know if you're special ops, because if you're special ops or anything different of, of special training, they'll send you to the cells because they can't risk you in population because you're a, a risk, an escape risk. If you tell them you do 10 bundles of heroin a day, they're going to send you over to 95. Because C-95 is the only building on Rikers Island that has the methadone program. And that's how everybody ends up there. So people that got habits, once they get arrested, they're already assessing their worth. They have jewelry, they have watches, rings, belts. They have things of value. So they know when they go to 95, They're gonna be all right. They're not gonna feel the sickness of withdrawals that come with heroin or heroin use. Oh yeah, they ask again. Yeah, this watch. As soon as they come in, you see them. They'll come in. They're not thinking about nothing else. They bones is hurting. And if you haven't seen anybody withdraw from a habit, it's a sad thing. So they'll come in already accessing your pop. Like, look, man, I got this watch. So, and they'll over, they'll over accessorize the value. They'll be like, yo, Papa, what's up? Let me get 10 bags. They know how to make that deal. That's the difference between the crackhead and the dope fiend, you know? The, the, the crackhead will come in with something worth $100, sell it to you for three. The dope fiend will come to you with something that's worth $100, and try to send it to you for a grand. Talk your way down. Maybe you buy it off of him for 700. Yeah. So there's games to this. So they want to end up over there. The drug dealers also, they know that there's money and there's potential that if they could produce, they can go there and make their startup money and their startup reputation. So when you get locked up and you're in those bookings, yeah, uh, yeah, they start asking the questionnaire before you come to the island. Yeah, so you do drugs? Yeah, I do heroin. Yeah, uh, what's your addiction like? Ah, 10 bundles a day. No, and damn well, you can't even afford 10 bundles a day. But you tell them that because that's an automatic express bus to 95. From there, they start evaluating you to see if you have... You know, they start weeding you out because not everybody can get therazine. So they'll cater to certain individuals that got the real habits and put them on, on the, not the therazine, the, uh, the methadone. Oh, yeah. You have guys in C95 all day. Even if they're not really sick, they'll pull a stunt. You see them in their cell, oh, throw themselves on the floor. What happened? Oh, we're snipping 10 bundles a day. Nah, you just trying to get that quick fix at that meth line. So moving right along, go to the yard. They had the red homies over there. And always was spinning the yard with a wild look on faces like, like they wanted to eat something in the yard, always. But it was always for some reason in the yard. Now it was popping off in these houses because the Latins was really overpopulated in these houses. And they was trying to let people live but it was one problem. These red homies that used to spend the yard, they'll get in contact with the people that's attending the yard, the red homies that was attending the yard in OBCC, the box. The C95 yard and the box yard were literally adjoined right next to each other. 
separated by, by two fences. Another thing that stuck out was that that was the first time in Rocky's Island that I've seen the tank. The shoe unit tank. No, I mean the, uh, the, the ERU, emergency response unit. Yeah, you see that tank, it shoots tear gas, it shoots um, um, a web with, with, the, with the cannons at the end to get your feet and wraps you up. It shoots that. It has a hatch that, that comes up and you get a, 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 a dozen or two football team Ninja Turtle dudes coming out at you, clearing everything up with the face mask and there's tear gas all over the place. But that's the one thing that stuck out the most was that there was a lot of popping offs going on in the yard because the yard was so close to the OBCC yard that the homies that was in the OBCC yard were top dogs. They were the shot callers. And here they are in the box doing all these numbers, but their communication to 95 was this. And you can't make this up. <clears throat> The red homies, you see their homies on 95 yard and be like, yo, what house you went? Yeah, yeah, I'm in this house. Boom, boom, they talking on this code. Be like, yo, how many such and such opposers you got in your house? Yeah, yeah, I got like three or four. Yo, you better eat food. If you don't eat food, you food. These dudes was giving out orders from the box yard to eat food. So these dudes would be in the yard wanting to eat food just so they lieutenants and they captains and they generals can see that they're eating food and get up out of there because they're put in a spot. That's exactly what it was, being put on a the spot. They're testing your Jeep. They know shit was popping off. They know that the Latins overpopulated blacks over there. They know that shit was ringing off and, and, and they wasn't letting homies live because of that. There was this one time, I'm going to give you an example. We was in the house, and it was a red homie that was on the, on the opposite side of where we were at. And this was a real cool dude, man. Like, let me tell you something. You know his name is Prim. And Prim, let me tell you something. He's the queen's cat that get bread, and he, and he focused on what he got to focus on. The dude was a good dude. By the way, all you guys from, from Queens are named Preem. Y'all all cool as hell. So anyway, he had got one of those orders because shit was ringing off on our side because of this kamikaze bullshit. All right? Let's hold Preem off for a minute. This kamikaze shit that was going on was even happening too with the Muslims. There was this one time where there was this, this one individual and he was in the shower, and he was a Muslim. And he had got one of those orders, and he was in the shower shaving himself. He was just shaving himself, bald, his facial hair. He shaved his, his eyebrows, his eyelashes, his armpit, like everything. This dude comes out of the shower into the, into the little hallway, which looks like a little storage unit, hallway, walkway, something like that. So he comes out of the shower with a towel around him, with a plexiglass, with a with a with a little handle made out of a, 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 a blanket strap around his neck. What the hell are you gonna do? You're gonna catch a beat down. Right now, you're a threat. So he had got an order to come across and eat everybody that was on that side. The problem was that Prem was cool with everybody on that side. But he was given a mission. He was testing his gangster. So he grabs his ox, he comes over to our side, and it was a it was a it was a nighttime. Everybody was chilling, music was on, everybody was just doing them. You know, if people had scored, it was a weekend, there was drugs in the house, so everybody's chilling. In comes Spring. He got a real wild look on his face. And he walks halfway. Now, 
Now, this kind of looks like if you ever seen one of those storage unit, when you're in a storage unit, one of those walkways, something like that. So as he's walking in the walkway, everybody noticed something strange about him. He had like a wild look like. So people get up and they get on point. He walks halfway over. He stops and he says, I can't do this, man. I can't do this, man. I ain't do nothing to me. And he turns around and he goes back to the block. Just like that. He says, I can't do this. Y'all ain't do nothing to me. That's a violation. So they ran him out of that side that same day. What I'm trying to get at is that because the red homies was getting G-checked in the yard, it was creating a lot of problems inside of the of the jail. There's a lot of missing, a lot of bros, a lot of people was getting ran out. At that time, uh, the bad boy kings, which were renegade kings, were, were, were spurring up. King Love was there. A whole bunch of real good bros, King Taste, you know. Um, and yeah, that, that, that was the politic. And uh, it got real crazy. I'm not gonna front. It, the near thighs were really deep in there. I remember one time, one, one, um, when it was in the winter, the heat went off. Now, if you guys know about C95, the heat is on the floor. Oh, it was a relief, right? Going into your cell after the whole night when you're locking in and taking off your boots and your socks and just putting your feet right on that floor. It was like different, right? So the heat went out and the whole that whole side of the cells had to evacuate because it was so cold that winter. So they were shipping people crazy. This shit was chaos. I remember we had to wrap our our whole beds with our blankets and all our property with our beds and be dragging them shits down to the projects. Now the projects was even worse in the cells because stuff was really ringing off over there. It was like, that was the most dangerous situation anybody could be in if, you got, if you're in danger. You have three floors and you have, it looks like project stairways that go to each floor. They have like the little cross thing. And when everybody lines up for child, you have to come out. The three floors will come out on the stairs and line up and come down those stairs to get your child and go back up. It was this organization at its best. And things were really bad. The hallway looked like somebody took 125th Street and put a dead smack in the middle of San Juan. Those meth lines were crazy. On the meds, boy, that's the only time you see some people actually stand up, get out, and go somewhere. Then they will come back. They'll take some of this methadone, put it in their in they mouth. They're supposed to show the, the officers that they swallowed it. So somehow they manage to squish it around in their mouth. And as soon as they turn around, spit it into a little container and take it back to the house and sell spit back. Yeah. Spit back is methadone that was in somebody's mouth that they spit out so that they can sell and get what they need, their necessities. There was a lot of perks to being in C95. Another one was when you're in courts. C95 is usually the first bus to head back out. So C95 was one of those buildings where it, 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 it held a lot of perks while you were there. Even though there was a lot of movements and a lot of skid bidders would come in, maybe violators or people that won't even stay in a week or two till they go to the court next time they are all of them. So a lot of people really come in with a real crazy mentality knowing they're going home. They come in with a sick attitude. They want to just score real quick, get high, fall back, Wait for they for them to go to court and get released. I remember we had this this dude, and uh, he was actually one of the three guys that had got shot by Bernard Getz. 
Bernard Getch was an individual that kind of looked like Woody Allen that took a train ride one day in the 80s and was robbed by three young black individuals. Bernard Getz pulls out a gun and he starts shooting at these kids. I think one of them died or two of them died. But the one that lived, he was in our house. And he was a sporty thief. He even showed us the bullet hole one time. You can see, missed his spine by like a half an inch. One time he goes to court, he comes back all sick, all stressed out, talk about if there's anything we could do because he yapped somebody for a chain, put it in his mouth and swallowed it. And for about two to three weeks, this guy was stressed, was pale, was trying to do everything to take that chain out, but it just wouldn't come out. It took like three weeks. One time we lock out and he's wearing a chain. Real long ass, thick, brawling chain. He's wearing the shit. Yeah, he got some money for later. But these are the things that used to go on in that building. And the biggest problem was the direct orders that they used to get, the hits, that used to come into the buildings and put everybody on edge. So no, nobody was getting abused. It was just a security issue. Because dudes was coming in kamikaze style and wanted to make a quick rep out of the first person they come across.